everybody, my name is Rael the Protogen and welcome back to another Q&A video where I am answering your questions from the Discord server that we have, which you can join down in the description below. It's been a while since I've done one of these videos, so I wanted to come back to it, and since, you know, it's a new year, new chapter of Rael, you know, I'm coming off of last year not really feeling the best about myself, I wanted to do another video where I talk to you guys, answer some of your questions, you know, answer some of the things you might have been wondering about for the last year or so, and tell you where I plan on taking the channel in the future. As always, if you would like to ask your own question, join our Discord. It is free for anybody to join down below in the description. Ask your questions in the Ask Rael channel, and your question may be featured in one of these videos. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. If you were given the option to become your Sona and move into a world of Anthros, but there was no way back, would you take it? So I'm imagining you're asking if I could go to a world with furries, if furries actually existed, would I go there? The answer is absolutely yes. Would I be my character that you see on screen? Probably not. I don't think I would want to be a protogen in real life. Um, it's a bit of a tough question to answer because I love Rael, I love protogens, but at the same time, I can be a cute little wolf boy or fox boy. Like, that's that's, that's kind of where my mind goes. <laughs> if you were to choose one thing to change about your Sona, if you would, what would you change? Honestly, I got nothing for this one. I don't think I would change anything about Rael right now. At least for the VR model, I would like to get some changes to match my current ref sheet a little bit more. But as for anything, literally anything else, um, no, I kind of like the look of Rael. I wouldn't really change him uh, at all, honestly. I don't know if I'm correct or not, but I can't remember if you play the drums. But if you do, what are some tips of someone who's looking to play the drums? Play the music you like to listen to. I look at instruments like this. If you're trying to learn by doing something that's not fun, you're never gonna learn. You're never gonna want to pick up the instrument you wanna play. Same goes for anything you wanna learn. If you wanna learn to draw, draw stuff that's fun that you can be engaged with. Uh, because then you're gonna want to keep drawing more. Uh, same thing goes with drums. If you want to play drums, play the songs that you enjoy listening to, that you want to learn how to play. For me personally, it was a lot of Pendulum, Iron Maiden, Metallica. Uh, I played a lot of Papa Roach, a lot of, per uh, not Periphery, but like, I played a lot of music from a lot of bands that I listened to at the time. And now, bands like Avenged Sevenfold for me were very hard to learn, but I jumped into it because it was fun to play and fun to learn. You're not gonna be the best at something just starting it out, so learn the basics, learn the rudiments, learn how to count, and then from there, start trying to learn music from your favorite bands. Would you rather have $100 you could spend or a million dollars that you could only flaunt? This is a really good question because on one hand, $100 is an art piece with Rael. On the other hand, it's a million dollars that I can only ever show off that I had and couldn't do anything with. So it's like I'm st I still have zero bucks. It's just, I'm not trying to impress anybody. I would rather have the $100 so I can get some artwork done. What's the thing you like most about your community? I love that this community is so accepting of others. I love that we bring everybody in. We've converted a few non-furries or anti-furries uh, to the community just because, you know, we're a bunch of normal people just with this hobby that we like to share together. A lot of people hate something because they don't understand it, and I think my community understands that, and we welcome everybody no matter what, it, uh, what, what beliefs you might have, you know? We accept everybody because everybody has a story to tell and everybody's story is important. Curious question, what's the best way to keep yourself from getting lonely during streams with little to no viewers? So this is actually a technique I, I adopted very early on because I heard somebody else say it and I can't remember for the life of me who said it. But for me specifically, what I do is talk to the camera like I was talking to my best friend or I just talk like somebody was over my shoulder watching me. Pick little things to talk about like you were making conversation with a new person. Like what's the last album you listened to? What's the last movie you went and saw? Talk about the movie, talk about your favorite favorite parts. Just talk. Don't hang up on the fact that you have no viewers. Just talk. Eventually your audience will come. Your audience will engage with you with those topics you're talking about. Just, you gotta keep talking. That's the best and only solution I have for you uh, until you start building your own community. Where did you get the female death model? I haven't shown this off yet. So I actually made this. This is based off of Albers Hyenid, and uh, I just took the avatar base from the Hyenid and made my own death avatar. So it's got the crop top, which I'm very happy with. It's got the cloak, it's got the bandages. And with this, I also have Lin's prefab for the death sickles that I can uh, activate. These are so cool. <laughs> 
I have so much fun with these. But yeah, I made this avatar myself based off of uh, Albert's hyenid model, and I also used uh, Lynn's sickle model from Gumroad. Which, all this stuff will be linked down in the description below if you want to check it out. Also, this model's like 10 feet tall. Mommy? Sorry. Mommy? Sorry. What is the best person to get good free art from? There is no such thing as free art, and I think we need to, as a community, talk about that a little more extensively because it's come up recently that people are stealing avatar assets, model assets, people are tracing art and claiming it as their own, everything like that. That is not okay, and that is not accepted. If you truly want art for your character, you can either, you know, be friends with an artist that just is super generous and wants to give you something, but don't take advantage of that, or you pay for the art. I'm very lucky because I have a ton of you guys that want to draw fan art and I love featuring it and I love showing it off to people. And in fact, we have a whole Discord channel dedicated to fan art and I'm always retweeting it on Twitter. If you want to draw me anything, you can do that. I retweet it, I share it out as much as I can with your names on it, and I try to make sure I'm supporting the people supporting me. Short of that, you shouldn't expect free art because you're not going to get it. And if you're one of those people that's tracing art, you you seriously need to reevaluate some things. Well, what game genres do you like besides indie horror games? I love first person shooters. I've been playing a lot of Destiny 2 lately. In fact, I'm like season rank almost 200, I think. But other than that, a lot of VR games, rhythm games. I love Synth Riders, Beat Saber. I love Clone Hero. But I'm a very casual gamer. I'm not a very competitive kind of person. But I tend to stay away from games like League. If there was one fictional character you could materialize into existence for the sole purpose of giving them a single hug before they fade away, who would it be and how long would that hug last? So there's literally only one choice for me, and it's this one. And that hug would never stop. Look at how soft she is! I'm just saying, if anybody wanted to do some Rael and Sky fan art, I would be greatly appreciative. Or any kind of Renamon, honestly. Your Digimon might be cool too. How does it feel to know there's a body pillow of yourself, let alone that you're selling it? I commissioned it! I commissioned these cheeks! You see those cheeks? Those are my cheeks! I specifically asked for those cheeks! Listen, I know what the furry community wants, and what the furry community wants is cake, okay? What's your favorite part about being a toaster? Honestly, it's how fun the Progen community is. Like, there are those bad seeds that just hate me for being me because I'm a popular Protogen in the community. But the Protogen community overall is just fun. It's, it's full of so many great people and so many things to do and people to meet and just a super extensive and amazing lore that I love. I, there's just... There's too much to talk about when it comes to the protogens. Hey, what's your opinion on Red Hot Chili Peppers, the band? I'm glad you clarified because I was gonna say I eat ghost peppers for fun. Red Hot Chili Peppers is actually what I based most of my drumming on. So that style of the double snare hit with the single hit, uh, the rushing and the dragging, and the overall funky kind of patterns that come from my personal drumming come from uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers and Foo Fighters. I love Chili Peppers. Chili Peppers has some amazing songs. If you had two chances to play with two people, who would they be and what games would they be? The only two people I want to play with on this platform, and it has to be on a charity stream setting, are Jacksepticeye and Markiplier. My two biggest influences when it comes to my channel and what I do here on YouTube. But literally, I don't care what games we play. It could be Gmod Prop Hunt. I want to do a charity stream with those two, and that's my ultimate goal with this channel is eventually organizing a charity stream with Markiplier and Jacksepticeye. Can we make it happen? Can you guys tag them on Twitter with this clip? Let's, let's, let's see if we can make it happen, dude. How was it starting streaming and making videos? It was hard at first, but it was fun. A lot of people don't know, but I started on an HP Pavilion laptop with just the laptop microphone and the webcam. It was garbage. I didn't know how to edit audio or record audio. All my audio was on a single lane on my computer. I used Windows Movie Maker to make all of my gaming videos. All that being said, it was jank as hell. It didn't work. It didn't make sense now that I look back on it with the experience I have. But I started somewhere and it just goes to prove you do not need fancy recording equipment to get started. How easy is it to switch from Twitch streaming to YouTube streaming? I want to switch myself, but know nothing about it. I'm in a very privileged position, so I'm not going to be able to give you a for sure answer on this that would work for you. I can only give you my experience and you can make your own assessment off that. 
I already had a community on Twitch. I had a community that was over 20,000 followers strong, uh, almost a thousand subscribers on Twitch, uh, which is a lot to ask for people to move from Twitch to YouTube, considering they're two completely separate platforms. However, my community is so supportive of me that the switch to YouTube has gone smoother than I ever could have accept expected. Suddenly, you guys were buying memberships to this channel. You're getting emotes that you can use throughout the channel, throughout community posts, throughout my live streams here on YouTube. And you're also getting behind the scenes stuff that other people don't get or early access stuff that other people don't get. What I like the most about the switch from, you from Twitch to YouTube for streaming is you get more for your memberships. Where on Twitch, you only get, you know, some emotes, maybe a subscriber only mode on Twitch. Here on YouTube, I can give you Patreon level perks per tier of subscription if you buy a membership. Now, the reason it worked out so well is because you guys are so giving, you guys are so just amazing when it comes to supporting what I do and where I wanna be. You watch the videos, you like the videos, like you should like this one now. You watch the streams, you engage with me, you gift memberships out to members of the community. So for me personally, making the switch from Twitch to YouTube was a no-brainer and it worked perfectly. As for somebody who's smaller in the space, I don't know how that's gonna work for you. I really don't. I wish I had a better answer, but all I can say is try. Try it out, see what you like, see if you can get something to work because you never know, you may get lucky, it may work. YouTube's discoverability is so much better than Twitch's, so I don't doubt that if you're a dedicated streamer to YouTube streaming three or four times a week, you will get noticed, picked up, you will get an audience. But you have to be dedicated to that. You have to be willing to improve yourself, your setup, your gaming. You gotta be willing to put the effort and the work in. You prefer chill out VR over VR chat? In some ways, yes, in other ways, no. They're both two entirely different things. But I don't really have a preference, it's just what I happen to be in the mood for that day. Hey Riel, from a person with ADHD to another person with ADHD, how do things like hypnofocusing or feeling nostalgic to the point where you don't want to do anything, ADHD paralysis, affect your daily life? This is a really good question because right before recording this video, I had ADHD paralysis. I literally sat and did anything else other than start recording this video about an hour before I actually got in to record this video. It does affect me daily because it affects things getting done. People think I procrastinate a lot when really I'm just in this state of like paralysis and anxiety and shock because I have to do this thing. It's a lot of work. I haven't started on it. I'm focusing on every single thing at once instead of breaking it down into smaller groups. How I get over ADHD paralysis is I use one of two methods. I use the band-aid method, which is literally just rip it off. Just whatever I'm doing right now, stop what the fuck I'm doing, start working on what I should have been doing. And a lot of times if I start, I don't stop until it's done. I've been recording now for almost 30 minutes. The other method I use is breaking it into smaller projects, which is save, which I save mostly for doing video work. One day I'll focus on making sure the video and the audio is the correct codec. The next day I focus on making the cut of the video. The next day I refine that cut. The day after that I work on special effects, sound effects, finishing up the video, and the fifth day is the final draft of the video where I'm able to go through the entire thing and get it ready for upload. And that's how I deal with my ADHD. Real, would you ever wear a maid dress? I won't ever wear a maid dress again. Uh, the last time I wore one was humiliating. I felt like garbage. I felt complete. I didn't like it at all. But, Butler Rael may be coming sooner than you expect. Rael, have you ever been to I'm sorry, my AOL brain stroked for a second. Hey Riel, why did you decide to be a macro? I'm short, I've accepted my shortness. I'm five foot five in real life. I'm only ever gonna have tall queen girlfriends and I'm okay with this because that means my hugs are right at boob level. So it's only really natural that I like big things. <laughs> How did you become so popular? Luck, it's like 80% luck, 20% hard work and shit. Like, I don't know that this channel would have done as well as it did if the Windex clip from years ago would, did not blow up, but then I took the experience I had from working on videos up until that point and just hammered them out. And I think it was 80% luck, 20% skill and knowledge. <laughs> what do you think about Australians who watch your channel? I think they're pretty neat. We all know you as our funny toaster, but do you ever get tired of being a protege online? Yes. Oh my god, yes. I have over 2,000 hours in VR. A majority of those hours is being in this exact avatar. To say the protogen avatar is a little bit sterile to me is an understatement. 
I'm not saying I dislike the protogen design. I'm not saying I think uh, like protogens are bad now or anything like that, but I am very tired of this avatar. <laughs> It's gotten to the point now where in my streams and in when I'm hanging out in, uh, with friends, I'm almost never in this avatar. And I tend to swap out of this avatar to be in my Hobkin, to be in uh, an, a different avatar. Just literally anything other than a protogen. They're just too sterile for me now because I have almost 2,000 hours using the avatars. What do you think about Star Wars in Star Trek? Oh, I love Star Wars in Star Trek. I especially love the part where Bilbo Baggins gives the wand to Harry and they're able to like go on this space quest uh, for the Holy Grail. Have you ever thought about setting up your drums to do some VR and VR drums and do a drum session as Rael? I actually have. It's something I want to do if I ever get a drum set again. So if you want to see that, make sure to subscribe below and become a member today so you can support getting a new drum set for the channel so I can start doing some drum streams here on the channel. Siren Head asks, If Rael turned into a vehicle, what vehicle would he be? A vehicle for destruction and cuteness. What's the dog doing? Bark. What is your opinion on the British? Uh, what can I say that won't get me in trouble? I like your... Castles? Rael, are you a skinwalker? Oh, I think I'm in armor. Morbius or Squid Games? Actually, you know what's funny is I really like when at the end of Squid Games, Morbius came in as a cameo and he was like, ah, you've been pranked. None of those people are actually dead. You've been morbed. It's, it's, you, you're on my show. It's Morbin time. I really love that part of the movie. Buff Roomba Rail. No, the world is not ready for that power. The world is not ready. Is it true that your server's mods live in your basement? Not at all. Why would you ask? Hey, you know, I, I have some opening for some mod spots, Drell. Would you like to come over and, you know, apply? I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure you'd make a wonderful addition to the team. Uh, help. Hey, Riel, did you have embarrassing moments as a child? All the time. I think everybody does. I think I was lucky, though, because I grew up when the internet was new. So I didn't have access to like MySpace, Facebook, Twitter. I wasn't allowed to use YouTube. I didn't record, I didn't start recording videos until well into high school. So unlike a lot of today's kids that are recording literally every waking moment of their lives and you know, uploading their most embarrassing things, I don't have any proof of my embarrassment. Do you ever just <laughs> What happens if a protogen ult F4 is? Well, you see what happens is... What's your favorite snack that you think no one would eat? God, okay, tell me you grew up poor without telling me you grew up poor. Uh, my favorite snack growing up was those little honey graham, like graham crackers mixed with milk and a little bit of sugar. That was a snack and sometimes it was breakfast. Oh man. What's your favorite Pokemon game? Probably in the realm of Emerald. Uh, I think Emerald is my favorite with Heart Gold being a close second. And the only reason I say Heart Gold and not Fire Red or Leaf Green is because Heart Gold had Giratina. So yeah. Wait, Heart Gold didn't have Giratina. I'm stupid. What's a song that has personal meaning to you? This song by K-Mac. If you get a chance, listen to it. If you can get over the screamy vocals, I think it's definitely worth a listen, but it's part of why I had a mental breakdown last year when it came to YouTube and Twitch. One of the phrases in this song that speaks to me is parasocial pariah. You know, a lot of people making relationships in their head about me, even though they're not real. So if you get a chance, definitely check out this song. This has a lot of personal meaning to me and was on repeat, like, for a majority of last year. If you could have anything in the world, what would it be? Decent sleep. Rael, is there a reason to the colors you chose or just because you like them? Rael has the colors he has because he looks the same to me as he looks to you. I am colorblind. I have what's called protonopia, colorblindness. I wish I was making it up, but I'm not. I am red, green, colorblind, and to me, Rael is gonna look exactly the same to me as he looks to you guys. So a lot of that design choice went into making him, first of all, like very eye-catching, very pretty to look at, very like pleasing to look at as well. But also, uh, a lot of the design went into, I want to see what you guys see. So that's where Rael, his colors come from. Do you have any kind of inspiration that made you want to start creating content for both YouTube and Twitch? If so, what were your inspirations? I'll go back to earlier on in this video. Markiplier and Jacksepticeye are my biggest inspirations. I started watching Markiplier in the early days of Amnesia and Five Nights at Freddy's. 
Um, and I started watching Jacksepticeye when he was still in the cabin at his parents' place uh, playing Happy Wheels. They're both huge inspirations to me. I want to be like them when I grow up. And guys, that is it for today. Thank you so much for your questions. Uh, I really enjoyed answering them and I really love doing these videos. So I want to do more of these. I I'm aiming for once a month. So if you have any other questions for me, feel free to ask them in our Discord. Go down below to join our Discord. It is free for everybody. Ask your question in the Ask Rael Discord channel for a chance to have your question answered in one of these videos. And if you do like these videos, make sure to like the video down below. Make sure to subscribe so you can see more. And as always, if you would like access to the emotes and the extra stuff we have on this channel, become a member. That being said, that is where I'm going to leave this video. Thank you everybody so much for watching. I am Rael the Protogen, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye everybody!